Alright, we're back with another Hackintosh tutorial. Um, I've been away for a while. It's been like, what, a year since I I did one of these uh, Hackintosh videos. Well, this time I'm back and I'm back with Lion. Yep, I'm back with Lion. Uh, people have been asking me when am I going to do a, a Lion tutorial. And one of my closest friends, he's been, you know, he's been pretty much pressing me out to do it. So I said, alright, I'm going to do it. So here we are. I'm going to do things a little differently, but first, let me log in. Okay. Wow, that's cool. Um, anyway, here's the situation. Uh, I used uh, IACOS L1 to install Lion. Uh, the problem I'm having, though, is the fact that when I try to load the App Store, it doesn't work. Uh, when I try to load FaceTime, it, it comes up, but it, you know, it won't let me connect. Um, what else? What else can I tell you? Uh, something else. Oh, iCloud don't work. Well, thanks to YouTube user uh, Save Our Culture, I was told that um, I can use IACOS L2. And IACOS L2 uh, is fully working. Everything works. Uh, the, the three applications I just named, they work. So, lucky for you, I want to see this for myself. And I have an extra spare hard drive to test this on. You get to see me do it for the first time. So, uh, we're going to do things differently, differently like I said earlier. Um, I'm going to break down some details for you, you know, like my hardware and why I chose my hardware and so forth and so forth. So things, you know, we're going to break this thing down in separate parts. So first things first, I'm going to address hardware. So be right back. Okay. I'm going to only show you these two items that uh, I have that, I'm, uh, that, I, that I have in my uh, Hackintosh. Um, the blue box is the motherboard the P5G41M LX2 and the green box is the sound I mean I'm sorry the graphics card which is a eight with is which is a Zeus uh, Nvidia EN210 the uh, processor I will be using is a dual core Celeron now here's the deal if you watch my other uh, Hackintosh videos you probably know that I've used this to set up for my very first Hackintosh that I built. Um, I've been doing Hackintoshes for the longest now, for probably about what, going on two years now? Well, maybe going on three years. Um, building, building one is completely different as opposed to getting you a commercial brand computer like a Dell or a HP and it just formatting the hard drive. You get a little more appreciation out of it. Well, anyway. Um, I went with these parts because they were cheap. Well, in price, they're very good parts. Um, when I bought the motherboard, the motherboard was about fifty dollars. When I bought the graphics card, the graphics card was forty. The processor itself was thirty-five. Uh, the RAM, I can't recall. I had a hard drive already, and I bought a case. And I think the case cost me about twenty dollars. So you know, I spent a little bit, just a little over two hundred, just a little over. You know, if you want to count the tax into that also. And uh, I built me a pretty good machine. If if anybody, if you know anybody that knows me, they'll tell you, you know, uh, he can't stand Celeron. But the, the Celeron, the dual core Celeron, it pretty much delivers. So, um, you can get these parts from, I like to go to Micro Center. If you don't have a Micro Center in your area, you know, you can also order offline. You know, you can also get these parts from Newegg or Tiger Direct. I'm going to tell you this much, though. It's going to cost you a little more in parts of Ti Tiger Direct. I just checked. Just doing you a favor. Now, uh, what else do I need to cover? Oh, okay. Another thing is, you know, when you're building your Hackintosh, uh, I go with NVIDIA cards because the success rate is higher. Um, I never liked ATI cards, no offense, I just never liked them. I thought they, was, they, they looked like garbage. When I was a kid, I thought they was garbage. And no offense, they still are. Um, and as far, as far as the AMD processor, there's too many problems with building a Hackintosh 
that has an AMD processor. So let's just stay away from that. Um, now, I don't want to waste no more time. Let's get on to the uh, the installation. Okay, uh, I'm going to start off in the BIOS because the last time I uh, did a Hackintosh tutorial, I was getting a lot of uh, a lot of emails asking me, "Hey, uh, what your BIOS look like, and what do you have it set up to, or is what you have it, you know, how you have it set up or configured?" So let's go through it right now, and I hope you can see this clearly. All right, uh, that is my uh, hard drive. That's my primary hard drive with the Hackintosh stuff on it. This is, um, well, of course you know it's my DVD drive, which is my slave. And this is my um, my second hard drive. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I think my second hard drive, which is a SATA drive, that's my Hackintosh drive. I think. I'm almost for certain. Yep, it is. That is my Hackintosh drive. Um, of course, you know SATA drive drives are faster than IDE. If you don't, well, now you know. All right. Storage configuration. All right, you see that? ATA, IDE configuration enhanced. Um, enhanced mode support is on uh, SATA. Well, serial, serial ATA, which is basically SATA. IDE detect time, 35 seconds or whatever. All right. Let's go back. System information that, that doesn't. There's nothing that we can configure. Um, advanced CPU configuration. All right. I don't think you can see all the way down here. As a matter of fact, that is the last one. Let me see if I can back it up here. Nope. Hmm. Well, I'm just going to drop it a bit. All right. So here we are. My ratio CMOS setting, my C1E support, my max CPU ID value limit, Intel virtualization, CPU CPU TM function, execute disabled bit compatibility, Intel speed step tech. All right, you see all that, right? Okay. Chipset Northbridge configuration. Excuse me, y'all. I'm eating some gummy candy. Um, you got memory remap feature enabled. All right, I'm just gonna stop talking and just go through them. All right, Southbridge. Power settings. All right. That's how I have it set up to boot. You know, the uh, hard drive, for, I mean the CD-ROM first, well the DVD drive first, then uh, my SATA drive, and then my removable drive. Hold on for a minute, let me go back here. Now, uh, this is just in case you got multiple drives like I do. Uh, the other hard drive has Windows 7 on it. Uh, let's see. All right, you see what that looks like. All right. Security settings. I don't have it set up. Don't care. All right, now let's exit. I don't have to save anything because I didn't do anything. So let's exit. All right, now we got that out the way. Now, uh, there's something I have to discuss with you, and I guess I'll discuss it right now while we're, we're starting this. Now, first things first, when you're uh, installing 
IACOS L2 or L1 or whichever distro you decide to go with you're going to have to remove this first the graphics card yeah well that's if you haven't already put your machine together but you're going to, you're going to have to start installing without this because what's going to happen is when I was trying to uh, install IACOS without it I mean with it it would hang during installation so keep that in mind now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue uh, after we get to the install screen so I can show you what to select.